<laughs> Welcome to Retro Upgrade. Today we'll be looking at these two things. This is a heat plate or hot plate and uh, it gets warm. It's a PTC module, so it's self-adjusting, uh, so it goes up to 260 degrees C. It's 600 watts, so it's pretty powerful. It self-regulates. A PTC is a element that goes up in resistance when the temperature goes up, so it self-regulates that way. Uh, this is a temperature module uh, for 220 volts. This uh, can handle up to 1,500 watts, so that should be fine. Uh, this has a thermocouple. Uh, I I know this isn't the best uh, solution for a hot plate. There are a few cheap ones, but also there are a few that are excessively expensive for small size. Uh, I need to put the sensor somewhere close to the element so it can get the temperature as fast as possible uh, you in short uh, you just uh, daisy chain it pretty much through the this sensor and uh, it turns on and off to regulate the temperature for you this only regulates the temperature below 260 degrees because it can't go over it i'm using m2 uh, screws and bolts here uh, to extend the feet because the ones that came with it are were really short I'll speed it up over here so you don't need to suffer too much M2 bolts and nuts uh, seem to be do the job quite nicely and uh, they keep it off the mat so it doesn't get too hot 260 degrees is still enough to burn uh, th uh, wood and other stuff I am going to make a small base for it in uh, maybe stainless steel so I can mount the temperature control module as well. I am using the feet that came with it. There, you can regulate them by just uh, spinning the nut. Uh, so that's that's a nice feature. So I need to test this out. Um, I tested this on stream with Richard uh, on a live stream. Uh, uh, on the Learn Electronics Repair channel and it works, it keeps the temperature and it's actually quite uh, well suited for a, uh, what's called a preheater when you're going to desolder big components and all that stuff I'm trying to plan out how I want it mounted and uh, what side I need to put it on so I don't cut the wires too short in this case it's, it's fine on the side that the wires come out because I'm going to have it on a, a small enclosure. My assortment of uh, shrink tubing. <laughs> so I, I chose the wrong one here. It went over the wires on the heating element, but actually not on the module. So I had to <laughs> take the next size up, which is the yellow one. I would prefer to have same size, uh, different colors really for this, but it's fine. It's still good enough. I'm using my trusty wire holder I 3D printed like 10 years ago. <laughs> it's really handy. I made my own uh, liquid flux according to Surin's uh, recipe. Pretty much uh, rosin flux in the, or rosin in the, uh, the IPA <laughs> and just let it dissolve o over a few hours and it's actually really good. It's better than the flux I usually buy. Uh, the, the liquid flux, that is. The paste flux is still a little bit better for some uh, some things because it doesn't flow away too easily. But it actually did the job really nicely here. So I'm pretty happy with uh, the result. So I put in a cube of resin uh, to make it and... Uh, I filled up the bottle and let it dissolve and then shake it about a few times. So uh, I turned off the recording and forgot to put it on again. Uh, so I missed to uh, record when I soldered the two wires to the heating element. But uh, in short, uh, power in goes to red and black. Power out to the device you want to start and stop goes from the yellow and black. 
So this is a temperature sensor. I was planning on drilling out the hole here and put it in, putting it in this way, but uh, there is a chance I can maybe scrape or damage the coil that heats up uh, the thing. So from the other side, there's quite a lot of space actually. It only reaches the middle. So I'm going to try to use some captain tape here to hold it in place, but unfortunately the captain tape I have is crappy quality, so it can't actually handle the high temperature and just and the actual tape doesn't burn but it let uh, the sticky stuff lets go so eh, it's it is somewhat workable <laughs> so let's turn it on we need to do a quick test so i haven't set up the heater yet or the the controller uh, you have to put in a few values uh, it has a p0 is the stop value and then you have the start uh, start value uh, on p1 and then you have a offset so you can calibrate the temperature and then you also have a timer offset so you you can make it when it reaches a certain temperature it takes about five minutes to start up again uh, this has a lot of users but uh, i'm leaving the two last uh, options at zero from factory and i'm just using start and stop so it when it goes to a specific uh, temperature it stops and then when it reaches a specific temperature down it starts again and then continues so it tries to keep it in that temperature range so why would i want to do this because if i'm going to use it as a pre heater you want as much heat as possible and uh, as well for soldering you can actually solder boards on this thing so my thermal camera only goes up to 150 degrees and uh, it's actually quite fast to get there. And now a quick word for my sponsor, PCBWay. Happy Halloween everyone. PCBWay is running a competition to redesign their mascot. Give it a check. They offer excellent 3D printing solutions like SLA, SLS, uh, FDM, resin, and so on. Their main bread and butter, of course, is PCBs, and they do flexibles and other stuff, but they are extremely good at this. And that's not all. They also offer sheet metal fabrication, CNC milling, and a lot more. They also have affordable prices always. Dream up anything you want and have them make it for you. It's really easy. Just upload a Gerber and you're done. They have an extremely nice community page with a lot of projects they can build for you. They, you can ask them to make your prototype. Happy Halloween again, everyone. And thank you, PCBWay, for sponsoring my videos. Now back to the video. Okay, so we have the thermal camera here. As you can see, it gets up temperature really quickly. So it's at 150. But if you check the... <laughs> temperature gauge on the it's not going up very fast so unfortunately the the module they use to measure temperature is not very fast let's say it actually gets better if you put it closer to the element and if you screw it in and thread it in pretty much it actually works a lot better but still it's not as fast as a firmer camera obviously and I had, haven't still figured out how it works. I do that later in the video though. This is a voiceover. So. Uh, sorry for the delay for, on the videos, of course. Uh, I've been very, very preoccupied uh, trying to finish off the Vectrex video. Uh, this is equivalent to one of these. This little guy is extremely expensive. This cost about 90 euros. And this does the same job pretty much. So you press the leftmost button and then you choose the, uh, what you want to program, uh, the P0, P1, and then you just up or down pretty much. It's really easy to set up actually. And it actually remembers even if you power it down. That's a really nice feature. But uh, this is quite useful. Uh, I didn't have a hot plate. I need one for 
for example, if I want to mix assets uh, to etch something and I need the acid hot, I can just put a small glass container and uh, heat up the acid on this. And I can set it to a specific temperature. Uh, now, because the sensor is so slow, it overshoots the temperature, then it goes down. So it's a little sucky. I can't say anything else, obviously. <laughs> but what can I do? Uh, this is a cheap solution. It's uh, three euros for the actual heating element and about five euros for the control module. So it's not expensive. It's like seven euros, eight euros total. <laughs> not bad at all. Uh, for a crude setup like this, uh, you can do small PCBs quite easily, or you can preheat a PlayStation 5, for example, to desolder a bigger chip. You can even help desoldering the APU with this. Now, you, you need some practice, of course, because the PlayStation 5 is notoriously hard to desolder the chip from. But yeah, we'll leave that for another video. So it works. Now, uh, what I want to do is uh, drill out so the core of the sensor is inside. So I decided to go from the other side. I found two drill bits, one that matches the inner diameter and one that matches the outer sleeve diameter that screws in. So I'm holding this with tweezers because it was warm still. Uh, it's aluminum. It takes a while. So I put some water on a, a piece of paper and try to do it that way one but eternity uh, one later. eternity later <laughs> i had to try uh, this again uh, during the day because it was really late at night uh, so i'm going to try to solder on this so people say these are useless you can't solder on them uh, with solder paste and stuff this is one of the first projects i made uh, with richard I, I actually this is the first project i redesigned one of his boards for a short detector it's actually his most uh, viewed video uh, the one dollar short finder it's a really interesting video if you haven't watched it on learn electronics refer so give it a watch and uh, i'm just i don't have the parts for the entire thing so i'm just going to solder the switch i have the parts for so i'm using solder paste here this is low melt solder paste uh, i that's what i use for most things uh, it's really good solder paste. Uh, I bought it on AliExpress, so it's not the best in the world, obviously. And uh, applying it like this is not <laughs> really recommended. If you have a stencil, that's a lot better. We didn't order stencils when we made this with PCB Way, but hey, hindsight. Anyway, uh, let's put on the switch. These are actually really hard to solder on if you use hot air, because you can melt the little nub that you can press back and forth uh, for turning, uh, yeah, changing the different pads uh, that are active pretty much. So let's put the temperatures we want. So this uh, solder paste melts at, at 138C, it says at least. So I, I'm going to put it at 142. So it bounces up to 140 something and then goes back down to 100 and then it jumps up and down like that uh, but i know it's overshooting uh, the temperature so i'm just going to zoom in to let you see it melt pretty much i haven't tried this yet uh, this was the first time i tried to melt something so i was curious to see if it actually could melt it but yeah as you can see no problems at all actually this is uh, real time i didn't speed this up so it works as well as the little wine I showed you uh, earlier, if not better. But of course, uh, you have a little more flexibility with the other one because it goes up to 350 degrees, but this one only goes up to 260. So keep that in mind if you're going to use unleaded solder, this won't work. But uh, this is really nice, uh, especially to, for doing small projects at home, because you can put... Uh, like 10 of these boards uh, let's check under the microscope the soldering to be completely honest i actually bumped this while it was still molten so it's a little bit lopsided but it still <laughs> kept the, uh, all the paths so, uh, soldered on i didn't re-solder it or anything so 
uh, button still moves. Uh, the camera froze for some reason, but eh, what can we do? And uh, actually, the solder seems fine. Sorry for the blurry image, but yeah, I only have one hand, so <laughs> and it's not an autofocus on my cheap microscope. I am going to make a video with a polarizing filter for it as well. I'm going to make a 3D model so people can put a polarizer on their cheap LED lights. As you can see here, these are not cheap. Uh, I got this for uh, as a gift from Richard. It's way too small to actually use for most things. I've been using it to heat up acids and stuff, <laughs> nothing else. Uh, because it's so small, I can't even use it for a preheater when I'm going to desolder, uh, let's say, a Mega Drive chip, one of the big ones. So I actually prefer the one I actually built myself. Uh, I'm going to use it to repair a Sega Mega CD in the future because it has a really big chip that uh, has had a, a little bit of uh, an accident. Uh, the capacitor is leaked. Um, yeah. Uh, this has a Fatal flaw. You have to push on the back side of the buttons, and uh, this thing gets hot, uh, 350 degrees. So you will burn yourself eventually if you don't, you're not looking at it when you're changing the values. But you need to look at the front to change the values. So yeah. And that's all for today, actually. Thank you for watching until the end. Subscribe and like if you like this. Otherwise, just skip it. And uh, Hopefully, I'm done with the Vectrex video for next month uh, and I can leave that behind me because I want to work on a lot of other projects like AI and stuff. Bye.